Okay, so uh, we are doing Kuf Lamed 130, uh, and this is one of the ones that we say uh, for, um, you know, an Ace Sara, okay, and hopefully we'll understand why. Uh, very short one, uh, not very short, but fairly short, uh, only eight Psukim, so let's translate it, and what I did this time, I prepared ahead of time, I got down here the R scroll, Rehearsh, and Alter, okay, I typed it all out, so, uh, okay, Shir HaMalos, all right, so we translate this as a song of ascents. Um, and we have done uh, two of them. We did not have a theory for explaining. Yeah, yeah the uh, 121 is Lamalos and all the other ones are Hamalos. Um, plain shot is that there were 15 steps going from the uh, lower courtyard to the upper courtyard and uh, they would sing one on each of these. Uh, but what's the idea? I don't know. And then there's also the Midrash about David summoning up the, uh, uh, the depths, like the water from the depths. I, I don't know, yeah. Sometimes um, there's like an introduction bit like this, like Shir HaMal. Yeah. And that's its own process. But here it's with. Yeah. It doesn't seem like. Don't know what to make of that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Mima Makim Karasicha Hashem. From the depths, I called out to Hashem. From the depths, I called you, Hashem. Oh. Karasicha, yeah. Adonoi Shim Av Koli Tiyena Oznecha Kashuvos Lakol Takanunai. My master. My master. Listen to my voice. Listen to my voice. Uh, uh like uh, help. Mm -hmm. Your ears like help me. Yeah, uh, close. Yeah, uh, uh, Oh, turn like to turn. To yeah, yeah. So yeah. let let your Blank. ears be attentive. I think as uh, that's uh to listen attentively What's is uh, uh they should be, oh, they should yeah. be. yeah. Um, lakol takanunai. To uh, the voice of my like, supplication. Yeah, to the voice of my supplication. So this is weird. Um, uh, I, I was torn between whether saying voice or sound. I know voice is closer to, I mean, first one I would definitely translate as voice, but uh, I don't know, voice of my supplication sounds a little weird. I mean, both of them sound weird, but okay. All right, uh, three. Im avonos tishmar ya adonoi mi amod. If uh, you guard... Iniquities. Yeah. Hashem. Uh iniquities. Uh Hashem. Oh, actually not Hashem. God, God. right? Yeah. Right. It's not UK Valve, okay? Right. Uh, who could stand? My Lord, who could stand? Yeah. Uh my uh my Lord. Let's just keep them consistent here. Uh let's say let's, let's say Lord. We'll do these as Lord. Uh, my Lord, uh, who could stand? Okay, and uh, are we missing a word? Oh yeah. Um, I like, so guarding to me implies like protection. I, I like, I don't know if I got this from our school, if you preserve, because I think it's talking about like, if you did not, you're going to see in, in the context, it means like, if you don't forgive, if you'd like keep them, you know, keep might be another goat. If you preserve or if you keep iniquities. Yeah. I don't know if this matters, but isn't it who will stand? Uh, who, yes, who, well, that's a good question. Yeah. Um, who, who can stand, who will stand? It's like, who could possibly stand? <clears throat> yeah. But I don't know, maybe Let, let's see, just see how the other English translators do it. Um, who could survive? Okay, that's <laughs> that's a little editorializing there. Uh, who could stand before you? That's interesting. That's I mean, that's also editorializing. Uh, Alter, who could endure? Yeah, I'm going to go say, say, uh, and say who can stand. Yeah, I, I, I think, you know, you are right to be sensitive to the literal translation. I think it's like, um, uh, uh, yeah, I don't know. I, I'm getting uh, like I Asher yeah. Yatsar vibes. I, you know, like, a, yeah, yeah even though it doesn't like use that. the word Amida there. Yeah. I think Yamad yeah, is like, who could test you will do something. All right, so technically, if Ken were here, but, he would okay. say that uh, this is in the, uh, <laughs> that, um, that there's no such thing as tenses in Hebrew. Okay, this is a weird thing. Uh, we in English cram it into tenses, but there's only perfect and imperfect. Okay, perfect means that the action is completed. Imperfect means that it is not completed. So in Hebrew, uh, the what we call the future tense in us loose uh, English speaker, or sorry, in this English speaking loose Hebrew speaker things is really uh, in imperfect tense. Uh, or imperfect, which means that it is an open verb. So it, that could be who will, who shall, who can, you know, who, you know, it's like leaving it open. Um, yeah.
Yeah. So I don't know grammar. Can you know, you know what? Ken learned his grammar from um, uh, what is it? You know how they have the, like these master classes that like oh, yeah, they sell online. Yeah, yeah he learned yeah. his uh, Tanakh, Tanakh Hebrew from that, and like huh? yeah, and he said it's, it's worthwhile, and he's wow. going to do Chazara soon. Well, but uh, yeah. All the, all the books that I bought. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, <laughs> yeah. For with you is the forgiveness. For with you is the... Now, here's the big thing, right? So forgiveness is one translation of slicha. Another one? There's, like, a is what um, slicha means. Yeah, I know. It's easy yeah, to forget. The other one? Pardon. Okay. And the machlokas is whether slicha means to remove the sin or to uh, delay the uh, the penalty, the punishment. I thought, oh, pardon. And I was like, that means <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I, maybe there's a better, um, I think there's another fancier English word for it. Yeah. Uh, um, Lamonti Bray. Quit. Quit. I don't know. Um, this, is, this is a strange phrase. On account of, what's the way? Like, your fears in order that you may be feared okay okay strange yeah okay kivisi hashem kivasa nafshi validvaro hochalti i hope to hashem i hope uh i think it's past tense i hope i think right i have hoped uh uh to hashem kivasa nafshi my soul hoped my soul hoped and to your for your word, I like yearned. Yeah, I so I you know I also translated it as yearned, and then I looked it up just now, and uh, let's see, the BDB says to wait or to await, or to wait for, or to hope for, and then let's see what the English ones say. Um, I hope for his word. Uh, I waited upon his word, and uh, for his word I waited. So. Um, Let's say waited just so we could differentiate it from Kivisa. Okay. I and I I waited his word. Let's say I I awaited his word. Okay. All right. This is uh the hardest pasuk to translate, probably here. Nafshi la donoi mi shomrim la boker, shomrim la boker. Um so my soul for Hashem it like keeps guard. Yeah, uh keeps keeps watch. Yeah, let's say keeps watch. Um, but yeah, every morning for literally, it's just for morning, right? Uh, Show me my boker. Keeps watch for morning. Keeps watch for morning. Okay, I want to read to you the uh, translations, and then I want to read to you Alter's uh, paragraph. Okay, um, okay. So uh, my soul yearns for the Lord among those longing for the dawn. Those longing for the dawn. So they use Shomer as longing. Okay, kind of like in line with KVC and, and Hokalti. Yeah. Um, Rav Hirsch says, um, therefore it was for God that I hoped when my soul hoped and I, no, no, my soul is my master's more so than they that keep watch for the morning, keep watch for the morning. Mm -hmm. Alter says my being for the master more than the dawn watchers watch for the dawn. Okay. Now just, uh, uh one thing to appreciate about Alter here for all my, uh, you know, of course it's a mixed bag of admiration and criticism. One of the things I admire him for is he is, uh, he tries to preserve the poetic sense of the Hebrew, which in general, I shouldn't say in general, I don't tend to care about as much, but with Tehillim, I think it, it matters. And listen to this just beautiful exposition on uh, on this Pasuk. Okay? He says a lot. He says, and just as you read, just listen to the, it's, it's more the, the derech of how he's appreciating, not for the sake of poetic appreciation, but just the scrutinizing like what the words are doing to your mind or emotions. Okay. So my being for the master more than the dawn watchers watch for the dawn. Previous translators have all supplied a predicate here. Okay. Is eager, is turned to, or the King James versions waiteth. Duly italicized to show that it is merely implied in the Hebrew. But the power of the line in the original is precisely that the anticipated verb wait, having appeared twice in the previous preceding line is choked off. My inner being, my utmost self for God, more than watchmen watch for the dawn. The Hebrew noun boker also has the more general sense of mourning, uh, but in this context of watchmen through the night, waiting the first light, dawn is strongly indicated. Um, previous translators render the four Hebrew words mishomim la boker, shomim la boker, as a simple repetition. Uh, for example, the uh, new JPS, then watchmen for the morning, watchmen for the morning. But shomim can either be a verbal noun, watchmen, or a plural verb, watch, plural, okay? 
The line becomes more vivid and energetic if the second occurrence is understood as a verb. More than watchmen watch for the dawn, I watch, elliptically implied, I watch for the Lord. The force of the image is evident. The watchman sitting through the last of the three watches of the night, peering into the darkness for the first sign of dawn, cannot equal my intent expectancy for God's redeeming word to come to me in the dark night of my of the soul. Yeah. So just a nice little like like trying to savor the Hebrew here there. And I do like how he um you know, nefesh is the same thing as, you know, we say atzmo means self, but literally etzem means bone, right? So same thing, nafshi um, uh, means soul, but sometimes it means self. So my very self is lashem, uh, is ladoshem, as for my master. Yeah. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and just um, pilfer uh, uh, altars here. Yeah. Okay. I like it. Okay. Okay. Um, Okay, then we got uh, Yachel Yisrael El Hashem, Ki Imar Hashem HaChesed, the Harbe Imo Fidus. Um, Israel will hope to Hashem. Yeah, so I, 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 did I look this up or did I look at the Radak? Um, let me just, uh, I'm going to just hold on. Uh, Radak, Yachel. I didn't know what to make of Yachel. I think he said Tzivoy. Yeah, he says it's a Tzivoy. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and, and treat that as a Tzivoy. So hope, O Israel. Um, uh, yeah, for Hashem. Uh, uh, Hashem Or only Hashem. Uh, Im. With? Yeah, with Hashem. Uh, uh, that would be with an Aleph, yeah. Is the kindness. The Harbe Imo Fidus. This is a strange phrase. And salvation is very within. Like yeah, that. much uh, redemption, I think, uh, like Pidion Haben is uh, is with him. Okay. The who yifte es Yisrael Mikol Who redeem Israel from all their iniquities. Okay, and he will redeem Israel from all their iniquities. Now, I'm going to go ahead and spoil uh, alert. I'm not going to read it to you from inside because I want to read uh, inside later on. Avon in Tanakh can sometimes mean uh, something else other than uh, iniquity. Um, anyone know? It's possible we have. Oh, no, I know what you're thinking. You're thinking of distortion. Yeah, okay, but uh, yeah. Uh, the, okay, so I'll give you the, the test case. So this is Mach Locus in uh, with Kayan. Okay, so what is Kayan's reaction after um, Hashem uh, decrees his um, fate? Yeah. yeah. So he, but he exclaimed something. Gadol avoni minaso. Okay, so how would you translate that? Okay, yeah, right. So, so, so some say it's like a vidui. He's saying my sin is too great to bear. Okay. Some say though it that avon there means onesh. Okay, and I actually forgot what onkelos says. I just want to check onkelos because that would be a good authority to quote um, for this. Um, Kain. Uh, Godol, uh, wait, was it you? Sagi Chovi. Okay, so that's uh, Mil Mishbach. So my my uh, liability is too great to abandon. Let me just see what uh, Naima Nevetsky says. My punishment. Oh, so she says punishment. She says, um, see Ibn Ezra and Radak. Uh, noting similar, oops, noting similar usage in Breshis fifteen sixteen and Shmuel one. Oh, that's like um kiloshalim avon ha emori adata. Uh, that's in this week's parsha. Um, because the punishment of the emori is has not been complete yet. Uh, that's why God won't uh, kick them out into the fourth generation. Um, alternatively, my sin, as per the word's primary definition. See also Uncle and Rashi read the the verse as a rhetorical question: Is my sin too great to forgive? Yeah. Okay. Fine. Okay, so let's just add this here, all of their um, punishments. Okay. Whew, okay, yeah. So, um, right. There you go. Okay. All right. So uh, here, the pivot is not so obvious. Anyone want to theorize where the pivot is and why? I'm going to go ahead and actually copy and paste this into the chat for... Uh... Does there have to be a pivot? I have... Well, you know, there's this theory about the pivot, and so far I have not seen exceptions. So uh, I'm going to look for it. I have a pivot. Yeah, where's your pivot? Five. Yeah, okay, I agree with you. Why? Um, before that, it's a, an appeal to a shem. Yeah. 
And then after that, it's more talking about things about how David has been something like that. And then it's going back to Israel. I don't know exactly, but okay. Yeah, I hear that. I I have the same pivot, but I have a different reasoning. Anyone have a, either a different reasoning or a different pivot? I'm saying yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, it seems like the, you know, I, I think I would agree with it in the previous five, but like, it seems like in the first half is talking about like more focus on God versus second half is focused on himself. Okay, I hear that also. That saying? No. Yeah. So I, just to put that in different words, I think uh, in one, or sorry, not one, in the first half, he's really expressing his yearning for Hashem you know, uh, or his like talking about his, you know, his, the, that he's calling out to Hashem, Hashem is, you know, please listen to me, please forgive me or whatever. Uh, and then in five, it is much more of a, uh, I guess, an active description of his reaching out for Hashem. In other words, first half is more like him asking for Hashem to respond to him. And the second part is more of him you know, uh, uh, ascending to a sham, yeah? There's a hinge. I also think there's a hinge. Where do you think the hinge is? I mean, it's probably obvious, actually. It's plus a hey. Oh, I think it's plus a ches. No. Yes. No, no. Well, why do you, why do you, why do you, why do you say? You know, like the first half is, you know, we said it's, you know, for you know, Hashem, I hope to Hashem. Yeah. And then he says, says, my soul hoped, and I waited his word, and then it transitions into my soul. Then it's like it's almost like a bridging, separating, you know, like like for God and myself. Okay, I, I hear that. I hear that. Um, yeah. Can you remind me about hinge? So hinge is okay. So the, the the primary case of hinge, uh, the paradigm case of hinge, is um, in uh, Tehillim uh, in Mizmor Shiliyam Shabbos. Okay. The definition of a hinge is one that um, can belong to either half, uh, and. Uh, and so it's, uh, you'll, you'll see in the example here, right? So in Tehillim uh, 92, um, you have the first half, which is there. Then you have the second half, which is here. Now, this is this is like the paradigm shift, uh, not shift, paradigm, um, that's a magic card. This is a paradigm, uh, um, paradigm uh, hinge um, because it can actually be read with both halves. So... Um, so my, you know, my, my, uh, Kitzer, my approach to Tillam 92 is uh, the first half is David Melch talking about how much uh, Chachma Hashem is evident in the universe. And he's singing about it. Uh, this is based on the Radak, by the way. And there's great death. And he says, a boorish man doesn't know and a fool doesn't understand this. I Meaning he doesn't understand the Chachma in the heavens. Okay. Second half is talking about the flourishing of the wicked and the, um, the uh, downtroddenness of the Tzadik. Um and he's saying that the foolish man doesn't know and foolish man doesn't understand this, namely that when the wicked bloom, it's only like grass and that they're going to be destroyed. Uh, and so the main idea, so the way that you figure it out is the main idea is basically, you know, of the parak is that the key to understanding uh, um, the solution to Tadik Varalo is to recognize Chachma Hashem in the universe. And that to the extent that you recognize the Chachma in the universe and that everything operates in perfect lawfulness, then you'll be convinced that everything in the human realm, there's also perfect lawfulness. But to the extent that you're ignorant of that, then you're going to have a question on Tadi Baralo. So it's like, uh, uh, you know, it's it's it, you know, it connects the two halves, you know, but uh, in a way that functions for both. So why do you think it's eight? Uh, wait, sorry. In, in, why do I think? Oh, in 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 our parak. Yeah. Um, okay. So this is going to be kind of tipping my hand here. Okay. Um, actually, you know what? I'm, let's do. Let's get the questions first. Uh, I don't want to because if I explain why it's eight, then that's going to reveal what my theory for the parak is. Oh, yeah. That, yeah. In terms of a hinge, how could the last puzzle? Yeah, that was my part of like, functionally. Yeah, functionally, that was really much, much, yeah. Because the hinge, because I'm going to read the last puzzle as bridging the two, the two halves thematically. Right. Yeah. I feel like it, it needs a new, a new term. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Isaiah, what would that? Be? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um. um so in Pasuk four. Yeah. Um, okay. Yeah. Yeah. So why did you say Lamont is already that really sticks out as like he's assuming 
an idea that we don't know. Like for you, is the for with you is the forgiveness in order that you may be yeah. Why would forgiveness be there so that Hashem? Okay, be right. Here? So to me, puzzle four is the most perplexing one, and I would say the opposite is like, isn't the opposite true that uh, if Hashem didn't forgive and He punished us, uh, that would cause us to fear Him, right? Um, so how is um, how is His forgiveness? Um, how, I guess, how does his forgiveness cause us to fear him? Uh, yeah, Ezra? Yeah, five and six just seem out of place. Five and six seem out of place. How so? Well, it's talking about how great God is and how we're asking to forgive us. Yeah. And how everyone's going to basically, we need his forgiveness for, for everything. Ah. And yeah. it's like, also, I really like God and I'm hoping for him. <laughs> okay, right. Yeah. Yeah. So I think actually what you're expressing, I think, is uh, is why the, the pivot is at five, because maybe, maybe this is the way I would characterize it. The first half really is expressing how distant he is from God uh -huh. to the point where it's like asking God to listen to him and like, I need forgiveness and stuff. And then five and six and seven and eight are expressing like this certainty you know, that God is going to redeem us and just saying to, to wait, you know? So the question, so I'm going to actually express this as a question on, uh, on, on like connecting the two halves. Okay. Which is, um, hold on a second here. Um, and I know this ideally should be the question on every pair of Tillin, but, um, uh, how do we, uh, reconcile the two halves? The first half, um, expresses a distance from God um, and a begging uh, for his uh, attention, whereas the second half expresses a certainty that his redemption will come, okay, like, and I'm, I don't think I'm giving away too much here, spoiler alert, the morning, the dawn always comes, right? Uh, like the dawn, right? Uh, so, um, yeah, so it seems, to, it seems to be contradictory. Yeah. Yeah. Um... Oh, sorry, sorry. Uh, yeah, go ahead. And then well, at first, my question you, yeah. was like on, on five and six, he's yeah. like waiting for something, but what is he waiting for? I guess Shad is that he's waiting for like Hashem's redemption. I think so. But why is he just like waiting for it or like what does he need to be from? Or... Yeah, okay. So let's just ask here. What yeah, what is he, what's he waiting for? What is he waiting for? Um, what is this redemption uh, from? Yeah. Are you? Yeah, and plus like the uh, bays. Yeah. Yeah, um, my Lord, listen to my voice. Let your ears be attentive to the sound of my supplication. I mean, like, it's just a little like redundant. I'll listen to my voice and let yours be attentive. Like, you know, just get to the point. You know, all right. You know, just like listen to my voice. You know, okay. Whatever, like, why, why do you have, why do you have to emphasize? Oh, by the way, also be attentive. All right. So let's just say, what yeah. is he asking for in um. In, in this pasuk, and then um, uh, I haven't looked at the Matsus yet, but you know, Matsus would probably say a couple of Vamila Shonos. Okay, but um, if the two halves are saying uh, different things, uh, what are what is each half saying? Yeah, and also, like, um, I guess, like, another question is like, why, meaning, how, how would how, how would this how would this um, parrot help us, you know, within. within I guess, right. assuming it's an Isara, how would that help us in Isara? Or like, okay. before assumption, assuming it's Isara, it was a scenario. Yeah, right? yeah, okay. So that I think that's actually, let's ask that on question uh, one, okay? Which is, um, what is the scenario, okay? Um, what is the state of Ma'amakim? All right, Ma'amakim. Um, and then, you know, this is, again, our question here is, um is like who is uh who is the speaker right um now you know it, this is because we're kind of starting in the middle of the sheer hamalos uh series um then i wouldn't be surprised if there are mafarsh who have a theory on the entire thing uh but you know we will we're just learning once we'll ask it here yeah it's a weird question yeah but i feel like in, in other problems we've seen david get um a lot more worried or like like uh desperate sounding or like almost like schizophrenic a little bit or yeah we said but here like he's like if this is really like calling out from the dead we don't see any 
any other hints to like how bad the situation is or like what the negative situation is or like right. really any like even in the first half he's just asking to be heard but he's not stating that he's okay trouble yeah that's a good observation okay i like that observation yeah you're right you're right that's uh not typical from what we've seen yeah no, no mention of enemies breathing falsehood <laughs> yeah yeah um if a honos means iniquities, what does that mean? Is that for from a Okay, yeah, that's a key question, I believe, especially for me because I think it's the hinge. Um, uh, so, um, what what does it mean to be uh, redeemed from iniquities? Um, yeah, I understand. Like, you could be forgiven for iniquities, but uh, or, or you could do chuva for for iniquities. Um, I also wanted to just see one thing here. Uh, seven. I also want to ask, um, I, I don't know if I should be bothered by this, but um, uh, like what, why is um, Peduce uh, being spoken about quantitatively? Or is like, there's a lot of Peduce. There's a lot of redemption. Like it's just, it sounds weird. Yeah, Ariel. Um, yeah, for Gimel. Oh, and is next. Yeah, I didn't see. Yeah, if, right. So for Gimel, what does it mean you, uh, if he preserves iniquities? And, yeah, and, and what does it mean that who can stand? Who can, I mean, okay. Can... So uh, let's just say, uh, uh, what does this mean? What would it mean to uh, preserve iniquities? Um, what is the question of uh, who could stand? Yael. Okay, this may be included in question five. Yeah. But, um, oh, sorry, not question five, maybe question six. Yeah. Yeah, question six. But it seems like in some way that there's like, well, first of all, I guess, what is this like hoping and what does it do? And it seems okay. like it's connected with like tefillah and hoping are what brings about redemption. So, like, I guess to the second half of question six, like, is that what's doing it and how? Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna make this a separate question. What is the act of uh, hoping? Okay, like what does that accomplish, and how? Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah. This is um, kind of the same question, but it's pretty much if if there are iniquities, isn't what you need to do to shoot up? Yeah. Um, okay. Uh, you know that about yeah. Iniquities. Isn't um. Isn't you know? Uh, isn't the response to iniquities uh, doing teshuva? Uh, okay. Rather than hoping, uh, hoping for Hashem's redemption. Yeah. Yeah, Ariel. Yeah, I guess like uh, I guess like what's the subject of matter of of this, this parak and like like what's the message it's supposed to convey? Yeah. Um, okay, so I'll, uh, I mean, the, 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 you're really uh, asking here, you know, Adler's first question, Adler's second question, uh, fourth question, right? So what is the, the subject or main idea of the parak? And then what is, uh, what's the parak for? Okay, I just want to make one observation as well. Um, so you may have noticed that there's some repetition in here, okay? But have you noticed how much repetition there is in here? I went and I color coded it for you. <laughs> um, I, this is not a question, it's just an observation here. Okay, so you have here, uh, my Lord, my Lord, my Lord. Mm -hmm. You have iniquities, iniquities. You have guard, 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 which obviously are being used in different ways. You have with you is forgiveness. With you, Hashem, with him is redemption. You have hope, hope. You have my soul, my soul. You have uh, yearn, yearn, or wait, await. You have... Um, La Boker, La Boker, you have Yisrael, Yisrael, you have Peduce and uh, and Yif Yifteh, you know. Um, so again, I, I don't think there's any, uh, sorry, I don't think there's any ideas we can get from that. Um, but I think it is, the more we learn to heal him, the more it pays to be aware of like uh, stylistic devices that he uses, because it might be that like we discover one, you know, we discover like that, oh, there's a, there's a time when he like goes into that mode or something like that. I, I don't, I don't expect to get anything tonight from that. Yeah. Well, I think like experientially, like from saying this to him, I think it adds to the cadence of the tone, the way that like yes. has things that repeat in it. Yeah. And, like 
you kind of feel that really with Misham and Lavoker, but other Pesukim. Right. Yeah. Actually, you know, that that's a good that's a, a good point, which is that um, when you're saying it, if you are saying this to urge yourself to be hoping for Hashem, there is sort of a like um, like oh, this is a horrible association because it's just not doesn't have the grandeur, but like just keep swimming. You know, like you just, you know, just repeating it to yourself, you know, does have a sort of effect of like uh, emphasizing that you have to stick with it, you know. Um, and so there, so even if that's not the exact way to express it here, I, I do think that repeating, like sometimes, let's put it this way, sometimes repetition is for emphasis. This repetition feels much more like it is... Yeah, like yeah, it's it's like yeah, yeah. I'm not, I'm not exactly sure to categorize, but that, that's that's as close as I I can see it. Okay, so before we go to the Mufarshim, does anyone have any uh, uh, ideas? I'm gonna copy and paste this into the chat, um, uh, and then I want to share my theory before we go into the Mufarshim uh, to answer Ariel's burning question about about puzzle Yeah, Isaiah. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so I'm hoping I'm not um, hope. Yes, I'm hoping that I haven't been like tipped to your theory too much. That's fine. Um, I chose to tip. I have no idea. Um, can, we, can we look bigger? Yeah, or sorry, I'm just copying that into the chat for the people. Of, it's kind of still a more slow bit, I'm hoping. I yeah. Bring it together. Um, so Ooh, I think that chat. there seems to be like this assumption in the background that holding the like iniquities. Yeah. Um, what does it mean to preserve iniquities? Is that like, you get punished for these iniquities and you continue to be punished until at a certain point you're forgiven from those iniquities if you do the right thing and get forgiven and then you'll be able to you know continue existing that's why it says like who could stand if you if you if you kept iniquities for like i'm assuming forever then like no one would be able to like live in that way so the way Hashem set things up is that you get punished and then you do teshuva and you get forgiven and that causes people to recognize the shem yeah in order that you would be feared okay good um so so then i think that there's in the second half i think maybe there's like a reality that like sometimes people get don't do teshuva because they sort of question the reality of the shem but they're not like so they're just, they're not so aware of that reality or like, it's not real to them. So David is really like imploring you to like, to like hope to Hashem, like, like his entire soul belongs to Hashem. And that, that's like what you should be like, because then you'll realize that you have to do Teshuvah in order to bring you closer to Hashem. Um, that's kind of like- Okay, that's a, that's a, that's a good approach. Right. Yeah, mine I'd say is either that or parallel to that. Uh, um, well, I just, I missed a Noah's comment here in the chat. This isn't a question, just a point on poetry. Not sure if it came up before I waltzed in, but the root mourning is shared by the words related to inspection and punishment. That's a good point also, mm -hmm. right? Like Lava Care, yeah. right? Yeah. Um, okay, that's good. Yeah, I, I assume that uh, etymologically that's the case because uh, of some association to visual, like the visibility, you know, like to, to see something, yeah. Um, don't know what it has to do with cattle though. A car but uh <laughs> yeah um <laughs> yeah he's the one that uh this one um you want to so i think so in the first half is third i mean it's saying that like uh hashem preserves hashem preserves iniquity on, by just one people. second yosef can you please close the door all right thank you yeah so Hashem preserves people's iniquities by punishing those people. Are you listening? He's answering uh, your question. Yeah, I'll, yeah, yeah that's fine. He's just a second. Uh, Hashem preserves these iniquities by punishing people. So that's why it says, who could stand for you if you like preserve these iniquities like forever? Like it would be impossible to live that way. Um, so what to say is that so with the, with Hashem is like Hashem is also able to forgive your iniquities, and when He does that, it causes you to fear Him. Because you'll see that he punished you, and then you did teshuva, and he forgave you, and then you're fearing him. After that, you'll fear not punishing him. So I think the second half is like imploring the people to realize that Hashem is the ultimate reality, and that they should do teshuva, um, so that they will have that recognition. But I'm not sure. How yeah, I, I think you're well on your way to getting a unity, but I think the unity needs to be stated here. So what's the difference? So so how are you explaining preserve? Um, 
to not forgive, right? To not, to forgive. not forgive. Yeah. yeah, right. And you're explaining but with you is a forgiveness. But when you do forgive, though, it causes people to be feared. Uh, because they saw that Hashem was punishing them, and then he forgave them, but now they know that Hashem can punish them. But where, where do you see that he punished them in the, in the first half? In the first half, that's why I'm saying that preserving iniquities is, is, is punishment. Because otherwise, who, why would it stop people from sinning? Yeah. yeah. Okay. So I, I think the place we need to start is from the beginning. Okay. Which is what is ma mocking? What would you say? So I th- there could be, uh, there could be two, I see two things. Okay. Two things. Um, you know, just something I was thinking about. Either it's, you know, you're, you're, you're so steep in like, you know, like, like off the dark kind of situation. Yeah. And like you're just looking for trouble. Like you, and like, uh, like a realization, like I really got to fix myself. Yeah. Like I need help. Yeah, that's one thing or like you're just in uh you know like like in 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 the in depths like in really in a really bad situation like an ace to heart that's okay okay yeah so i i think i think those are those are two possibilities i also was inclined for the first possibility because yeah. if i i was taking this again i was i was thinking about each half at, at a time so i was thinking if you just look at the first half it sounds like he's in the depths of his avonos. Yeah. Okay. Right. Um, and I think the problem he's the way he's framing it is he's he's trying to get God to even listen to it, to even listen to him. Yeah. Okay. And he's expressing the fact that he's so distant from Hashem because of his avonos that Hashem won't even listen to him. Right. Okay. Mm-hmm. And uh, and then he's making an argument saying that you know it sounds like the argument I'm getting from three is if you never forgave people. So then there'd be no point in living, you know, because everyone's going to sin and the sins are just going to accumulate. And like, then there'd be no point in, in anything. And it's only because you forgive that we can get into a state, kind of like I, what Isaiah was saying, where like we can um, we can uh, have a hope of aspiring to uh, to like, you know, fearing you. OK, but I also think that the way you said it, Arya, with the going you know, off the Derek thing. Um, that's how some of the Mepharshim explain, uh, I know we're going to go out of order here. That's how they explain, uh, Dalit. So I want to show you the Me'iri. Okay. Me'iri is my favorite one. Um, so Kim Haslicha Lamanti Bere. Klomar, meaning to say, Shabine Adam, E. Afshar Lahem Shalot Lachato. It's impossible for people not to sin. Uh, Kiyitur Lev Adam Ra, because the uh, inclination of man's heart is evil. The Ilu Lohif Tachta Beslicha, Lo Hayisa Nora. Uh, if you had not promised forgiveness, you would not be feared. Why? Because once a person sinned, uh, he uh, would give up on forgiveness. And he would think to himself, since Chuba is not going to help him, then screw it. I might as well just go and fulfill my desires. Benimsa, consequently, God's promise for slicha is the cause of him being feared, right? And Radak says something similar, uh, which uh, you can just look at it if you want to see it in his language. He says, um, uh, in the name, oh no, actually skip his father's interpretation. Uh, yeah, uh, Ibn, Ibn Ezra, he quotes Ibn Ezra. I mean, we can just look at him as well. <laughs> Uh, right. So if you didn't forgive, then people are, you know, if it was like um, zero tolerance policy, right? You get one, once in, you get kicked out of the school. So then people are just not going to go to school, you know, and then, you know, they're, they're going to give up and that's it, you know? Um, yeah. Okay. So, so I was looking, learning it like that. And I just want to add a Rambam in Perik Vav of Chuva that, uh, not the one I always quote. Okay. A different one. Um, I think Rebbe quotes this in the, uh, um, in uh chuva one uh because i hear it in his uh in his voice um so this is in hilgos chuva perik vav where he's talking about how you can lose your bechira if your avonos are severe enough and was that okay and he says um so he, so you know that's what happened to paro that's what happened to sihon so he says this is why uh what the navim and tzadikim were asking about in the tefillos from hashem to help them on the path of truth as as david says in Tilim 27 uh instruct me hashem in your way Al Ida Darkacha 
Do not let my hataim withhold from me the path of truth from which I can know your, I will know your ways and the oneness of your name. So this is a very basic idea, but avonos and hataim obscure your uh, Yudhiya Sashem, right? They cloud your view of reality, okay? So this leads to a problem here, which is, um, you know, we say in Ashrei, uh, that Hashem is close to all who call on Him, to all call Him in, in truth, uh, on Him in truth. So now David's like in a in a bind here because he's in the depths of his avonos, which means that he can't see God clearly. Okay, so he calls out to God because he knows that he needs God's help in order to do tshuva. But the problem is because he's so far from God, then he can't get God's help. So that's why he's like asking God to hear his voice, you know, to hear his supplication. And I think this might be, just to answer your question, this might be why um, uh, he uses the term, um, I don't think it's teaching two different ideas. I think the first thing is Shema B'Kali is listen to my voice, but then this is an explanation, which is be attentive to the sound of my supplication, right? Supplication is asking for something you don't deserve is for Mat So he's acknowledging that I can't, um, you know, I, I don't deserve this. And it, it's possibly saying to the sound of my supplication, this is total speculation on my part, but I think it's poetic and it works, which is that W doesn't even know that he's asking for the right thing, but, but emotionally and intellectually, he's acknowledging I don't deserve this. And everything he's saying is just like expressing like that sentiment. So he's saying like, listen, like I might be saying the wrong things. I might be distant from you. I might not be, you know, have be worthy of my, uh, my words being listened to, but like, listen to the sound of me supplicating, you know, um, and recognize, and this is where he switches to the argument. He makes an argument to Hashem. It, it's in your best interest. I don't mean that you're going to benefit God, but I mean, your plan is for human beings to fear you, right? What did Moshe Bain say? Uh, uh, just to fear God, et cetera, et cetera, right? So you want to be feared, Hashem, but if you don't forgive me, if you don't forgive those who sin, then everyone's just going to go out and do chatayim. So it's so I I recognize I don't deserve it. I recognize I'm far from you. And I'm just asking that you forgive me so that I can be in line with your will to eventually fear you, which is what you want. That's like the first half, yeah. I... I... I have a couple of comments. Yeah. Um, and like a like a variation. Sure. I was thinking a little bit different. Sure. And a, a couple of questions. Okay. So I'll, I'll I'll just start with the comments. So like I was thinking that like you know really like the, this tefillah is at the end of the day every tefillah is for themselves, right? Yeah. Yeah. You know, so like for a guy who's like going up to Darab and it's so steeped in his avonos, you know, I you know I was thinking that maybe like you know, the, the redundancy in the second Pasuk is, you know, like, he may feel so out of it that, like, he, he may not even feel like he's even being worthy of being heard. Yeah. But that's not the right attitude. It's not the right framework you should have because, like, you know, um, because you know, it could be a deterrent, right? So right. I think I think he's emphasizing that, no, like, like, God, hear me as it's more of, like, for himself, like, you know, be more persistent with, with yourself and letting yourself allow God to hear you. Yeah, as you were saying, in other words, you're 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 saying that he is by saying to God, listen to me, he is affirming to himself that I am yeah. worthy of being listened to in some framework. Everyone, I'm an... everyone is able to do shoot. Right, right. Everyone. Like, oh, that's a good idea. Yeah. Think that, like, you, you, I may not even be able to do shoot yeah. because of where I'm at. But right. no, 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 you are, you just have to. Just, just keep on pushing through, my man. <laughs> <laughs> that's a good shot. I like that. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Yeah. So, so, um, so now the third possible is if you preserve, keep an echo. That so, like maybe it's like, like look, like um, and I'm gonna use this as you know, like like he's actually punishing you. Like, look, you, you could punish me, but at least let me do tshuva. You know, what, what, like for, forgive my sins. Like, don't yeah. let me just like. Right. Let the know, sins be taken right. off the record. If you you know, don't keep yeah, them. Right. Give yeah. Me a chance, yeah. God. yeah. Right. Right. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. So that's how I was thinking about it. And um, what were the questions that I had? I don't remember. <laughs> okay. No, those are those are two really good approaches. I like that. Yeah. Okay. Now let's. Yeah, Ayala. Okay. Also, two questions. Sure. First question on Pesach four. Yeah. Is it okay? Is it saying, or I guess, are we explaining it as like a psychological thing that if Hashem, if there was no like slicha then Hashem wouldn't be able to be feared because we wouldn't like psychologically be able 
to fear Hashem because we just like go off and do like, yes. other things. Yeah, I mean, it's hope. more than psychology. I mean, it's caused by the psychology is that that we would give up hope and then we would go and sin and get even further away from God. But it's the, the it is the um it, it's the actual fact that we would spiral off into doing sins. It's not just like in our minds, you know? Yeah. Right. Because I could see like another possibility, which I was thinking was like that humans were created to fear God, whatever, or like that our purpose is to fear God, like the Pesach that you quoted. Yeah. And that it wouldn't be possible just because there wouldn't be any humans left, kind of. Oh, that's interesting also. Yeah. You mean it's an extension of the Miya mode argument? Yeah. Okay. I, I hear that also. Yeah. I was also thinking that uh, that maybe it's just referring to the fact that we would... You might think that this is the same thing I said before, but it's not. Uh, <laughs> that given what the Miri said, we would just go off and do a bunch of sins, and then that would not be a state of fear in God. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Because uh, I know this. I was thinking like fearing God, like I guess fear of God could be two things. Fear of God could be like Yeras Chait type fear of God, where we are obeying his word. Or Yeras Hashem could be the ultimate pinnacle of your uh, of, of of like all of God, like in the Hilos Zodi Dora too, too. You know, uh, I was I meant it the first way, or I meant it the second way the first time, where like we would not reach that state of perfection of Yeras Hashem, like Moshe Rabbeinu was talking about. But it could be just more simply, we're just going to go around sinning all day, and we're not going to be in a state of Yeras Hey, and both of them are bad. Yeah. All right. Uh, I remember my question. Yeah. And I and I think something you said is um. First of all, how how are you explaining that if you forget if he forgives, he'll be more fear? Because it's I'm saying the Meiri's interpretation is if God didn't forgive, there would be no hope in doing tshuva, and we would just go sin. So the fact that forgiveness is a possibility means that you can do tshuva, be forgiven, and then you'll be on the on the right path again. Okay, okay, I have a, I have another comment on that. Yeah, one is. Um, like it's also like another argument. Funny, another argument could be like, like God, if you let me, uh, if you let me do tshuva, like I'll be a be- I'll, I'll be a better person and be you know I'll be more perfected for the for the greater good of the system. Today. Yeah. Like um, yeah, meaning like yeah, you could just punish me now and kill me or whatever. Yeah. But like, don't you want me to like per- perfect myself? And, like right. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You you can so say that. That be like. I mean, uh, you could say that, but I mean, isn't um. But I feel like. I know that's not what he says, but like yeah, I, I just don't think it flows from the words as much as the what we're as what the other approaches we're saying. No, 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 I'm not saying. I'm not saying. Are you saying it's uh, another argument you can make? Yeah, it's yeah, it's another argument you can make. Yeah, yeah. Um, so maybe I'm missing part of your approach, but how does in what we're saying now that uh, the fact that forgiveness is with Hashem is what allows us to not spiral out on the sin? Because no, I'm not asking how the, that works, but. How does that cause, how does that work as an appeal to someone to do tshuva? Because like, okay, that's how forgiveness works in general, but you have your own sin that you're steeped in. Like, why does the fact that that's how the world works? So I actually don't think that this is an appeal to get a person to do tshuva directly. I mean, I think that's the implied like framework of it, but it really is, it's essentially what he's asking for is for God to forgive him, you know, or to pardon him. You know, um, so that's really, and he's made, that's why he's making an argument in God's framework. That's why I think it is a candidate to say that this is not asking for total forgiveness. This might be asking for, um, you know, a reduction of the punishment so that I can have more time to do tshuva or I can, you know, I can be facilitated in that. Yeah. Uh, Ayala? Okay. So it sounds like we're describing it as like, this is like a state of like being steeped in sin. So yeah. is David Amalek ever in a state like this? Or is it like, relatively speaking, for him, it would have been, but like, if we were at that level, it okay. wouldn't. So I haven't looked at all the Mufarshim, but I am pretty sure this is not David talking for himself. Um, I think this is stated on behalf of Claudius Israel, and I'm going to advance that argument in a second. Okay. Although I will say that the Redak says that this is... Um, uh, uh, maybe it's not the Redak. Someone said that this is the tefillah of, of every chassid uh, in Golos. Yeah. Okay. So let, let, me, let me transition to my theory. Actually, before I do that, I'm going to make a point because otherwise I'm going to forget it. Okay. This is a general point in how to say to him. Okay. We've just really fleshed out like what state of mind is being expressed here. When you're saying this, you should tap into that state of mind. <laughs> okay. If you're just saying the words, but you're not 
reflecting and feeling how much your view of God is clouded with your avonos and you're not feeling like I am someone who God would never listen to and therefore I have to beg God to listen to me and then make an argument not based on my own merits but based on the fact that God gave us a system that like unless he forgives me and gives me time to do tshuva then then the system's not going to accomplish its goals you know then you're really not saying to Ellen, you're just saying words, you know? So like, I, I think that that's a, a thing that it's so easy to, um, you know, this is why, uh, okay, this is, <laughs> I've, I've never been in Queens college and taken acting class, but like, yeah. you know, I, I, I assume that like, if the method of acting is to find that place in yourself where this is like, you're saying this genuinely, that's really what you have to do in order to say to Ellen, because remember what we did last time, the whole mechanism of Tillin is you're rewiring your emotions to be in line with your knowledge of God. So you have to tap into those emotions in order to rewire them. Otherwise, you end up being compartmentalized where your mind recognizes these truths, but your emotions remain untouched, you know? So it's like, uh, you know, getting into that mode, you know? It's called the Stanislavski approach. Oh, okay. I've heard that that name thrown around, but so uh, yeah. you, you you want to put yourself in the actor's shoes. Yeah, I mean, I know you did that in the uh, poor video. That was a uh, <laughs> that was a real masterwork. Yeah. Uh, okay. All right. So now let's transition here. Okay. So up until now, I thought that this was the individual talking about redemption from his own sins. Okay. But then you get to five. And, uh, sorry, he didn't even use the word redemption. We're talking about like being forgiven. Okay. Then you go into five and he starts talking about uh, about the word of Hashem and the redemption of Hashem, okay? And he will redeem Israel from all of their iniquities or punishments, okay? So now I'm thinking, oh, this sounds like it's about Israel as a whole, okay? And in fact, if you look through the Mepharshim, the ones that I saw said that this is talking about the um, Ma'amakim of Galus, okay? For example, um, the Me'iri um, here says um, on the first Me'iri, um, first of all, the Radak says something which I was not thinking. He says, uh, where's Radak? Um, Dima Gullus Lamamaki Mayan, deep waters. I wasn't thinking deep waters. I was thinking of like a pit or something like that, you know? Um, okay, fine. But uh, Meiri says, Gamzos Hamala Nemar al Bnei Hagalos. This is said uh, um, from the perspective of the Bnei Gullus. Tfila Hagula. They are a son of, no, that, oh yeah, Mimamaki, Rotolomar. From the depth of Galus and from the confusions of the Tsaros. Okay. So now I'm thinking, um, okay, so I don't want to throw away the theory I have for the beginning. Um, but this is now talking about redeeming Israel from the Galus. And it's talking about this is one you know, we asked, how could he be certain of this? So there is a certainty. God promised us that he will be, uh, he will redeem us from uh from Galus as a nation, okay. But how do you tie it together? That's the hinge, okay? Is you would expect it to say at the end, if this is about redemption from Galos, that he's going to redeem us from our sorrows or from our Galos or from our Mamakim. But no, he will redeem us from our Avonos, okay? Because Ein Yisrael Migalin El Abitshuva, right? That is the principle uh, that the, I don't know what the source in Chazal is, but the Raman brings it down in uh, Tess, uh, Nig Alim. Hold on. Yeah. Uh, this is in uh, Zion Hey. All the Nevim uh, commanded about Tshuva. Right? The, the Nevim promised, uh, the, sorry, the Torah promised that at the end, Israel will do Tshuva at the end of their Galus and immediately will be redeemed. Shnemar, as it says, it will be when all of these things come upon you, the blessing and the curse, uh, that I have uh, placed before you. You shall take it to your heart. Amongst all the nations that Hashem cast you off there. You will return to Hashem your God. You will listen to His voice. As everything, like everything I commanded you. Hashem will return your, your, uh, your returnees, I guess. And he will have mercy on you. And he will return and, and gather you in from all the nations that he uh, that he scattered you there. Okay, so that's the tie here. Okay, which is that the first half is talking about how you feel so distant from God that He's not even listening to you, 
yet it is part of his plan to forgive you because otherwise human beings couldn't last and people would just spiral off into hate, okay? On the other hand, you have a national promise that God will redeem you and you can be as certain as that as the watchers are certain that the dawn will come, okay? But so how do you reconcile those two things? We're so far from God, but like he promised, well, there is only one path and that's through tshuva. And the way that the the that that the gullus is gonna the gula is gonna come about is through us doing chuba, you know, um, and that's why I'm saying that thematically I'm saying it ties the two halves together. It ties together the theme of of being distant from God because of our sins, and it ties in the theme of redemption of Israel that is certain. That's why I'm saying that uh, that idea. Now I don't I I feel like I've gotten ninety percent of the idea. I feel like we need to like. So what do we what do we have? But do you understand the why I'm I'm saying eight is the one that ties both of them together now? Yeah, can I try, can I restate it to make sure. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so the first half is talking about re redeeming our iniquities, um, or saving our, our saving, uh, um, allowing us to shuvah. Right. Yeah. It's really I, I'd say it's expressing a really what we're expressing here is hashivenu Hashem elach of an ashuva. Right. Is we're we're, we're you're reaching out to God to relate to us. And to give us pardon, so that we can like come close to him and do tshuva and stuff like that. Uh, but we're not even talking about redemption from uh, from uh, of Israel yet. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Then so second half. That's five, five through seven is talking about redemption. Yeah, redemption for Israel. So, so where do we see that in five, six, and seven? Well, um, he's saying he's hoping and hoping, and it's going to come. What's going to come? He says redemption. Okay redemption and uh and he will redeem israel and then the the punch is the redeem israel from their iniquities okay right and, and the, see the, this is a move i see in uh kinos a lot okay kinos punches you okay because kinos uh i mean uh, so, several of the kinos do is it string they string you along and think you think that the python is going to say one thing and then he punches you with the message of you should do tshuva you know so here it's like and god will redeem us not from our sorrow, you shouldn't say sorrows from our oppressors, from our edit, from our sins. Oh, really? The work is on me. I have to do it, you know. Uh, and that that's the uh, that's the punch. And that was again, that was my um, that was my bone to pick with the uh, with the Asifa, you know. Uh, um, that the first rav said we need to do tshuva from all of this stuff. Second rav just said said just trust in Hashem. He has a plan, you know. He'll redeem you. Yeah, he'll redeem you. You know, he'll and like. Fast. And there was acknowledgement that that like we need to have octaves and stuff like that, but there's no real we need to completely change the way we think about things, you know. Yeah. Um, and so like that, I think that's the that, that, that's the punch. And so in terms of the way that this is supposed to work, let, let me just talk it through a little bit here. The way that this is supposed to work is when you say this, you have to start off in the first half by by really feeling how distant you are from God because of your avonos. Okay, and you have to recognize the danger that there is a part of you that wants to say, screw it, I'm doomed, and I might as well just live however I want. But you here, this is where the self-affirmations come in. You're reminding yourself, no, but God said that nothing stands in the way of tshuva, right? Let's go, go back to the, uh, uh, you know, th this is out of all of the seasons of my life, you know, because of the present, uh, you know, the situation uh, in, in Israel, this is the first time that my learning of Hilchus Tshuva has extended so far after the Aserah Samit Tshuva. Like I'm finding myself in Hilchus Tshuva so much these days. Um, but at the end of Hilchus, a pair of, I, I mean, honestly, I mean, yeah. Um, yeah. Um, yeah. At the end of the Perik Dalad, where it's all the things that are Ma'aki of Tshuva, he says, Koli will have divine the Kiyos men. Rafesa quoted this on, uh, at his house on Friday night. All of these things and things like them, even though they withhold, they uh, they block tshuva, enan moni tshuva. They don't uh, withhold it, even though they um they well, there's a better word I have, um, yeah I don't want to use the, yeah but for the first part though, even though they are ma'akev, they they um I don't know what hinder. Hinder. hinder hinders the word I was looking for. Even though yeah disrupt is also good, but even though they hinder tshuva, they don't prevent it. Im asa adam tshuva mehen is a tshuva. If you do tshuva, you are a tshuva. You know, so like you should feel how far you are from God to the point where you're not even worthy of Him listening to you. But you have an argument on your side, which is you Hashem want to be feared, 
And I'm telling you, Jeff, if you don't forgive me, I'm going to go wild. <laughs> you know, <laughs> no, no, it's not, it's not, yeah, not, not a threat. But that, again, that's a reminder that like that chuva is a path. And this should should prompt you to start doing chuva. And then you should think to yourself, well, what's the point? How are we, uh, you know, again, the circumstance here is you're saying this because you're in the depths of gullus, okay? And, you know, this is very easy for us to feel now that the, there's all these enemies around us and uh, uncertainty about our future. But we know that God promises us that he's going to redeem us. And it can be as certain as the dawn coming, but the only way that's going to come about is if we do chuva. And I think maybe the harbe imofidus, maybe, just to answer the quantitative thing, is we have a good track record at this point, or I should say God has a good track record of he's redeemed us many times. And I, again, I think the best example of this is um, is uh, in, what do you call it? In uh, Purim, right? That, uh, you know, they did tshuva there and they got redeemed. Uh, and the whole situation turned out instant, uh, turned out instantaneously. Let's go clockwise. Yeah, Isaiah. Um, so this might not be a question that applies in your idea, but would you say that there's a section in the Teshuva process that this is being said from like um like is this someone is the person who's talking especially in the first half someone who's still doing the sin or to stop doing the sin but i i think you could still be uh, i think this could be said when you've uh, you're still doing the sin you know yeah right. you're the, the 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 category is you're still tainted by this tainted by the sin you know so whether you're still doing it whether you've stopped it but you haven't done chuva yet i think it fits in all those yeah um Maybe it's too broad of a question, but I always sort of feel uncomfortable when we try to force God's hand and like say, oh, you're because if this is your plan, you yeah. give us this. Now you have to be good. So you yeah. have to do this. I'm just reminding him. I always think it's, it's like, I mean, I don't know. I don't really have a specific question. But it's yeah, I know. Like, so that, that's why I tried to like backpedal a little bit by saying that really what you're doing is you're reminding yourself that the only reason why God is forgiving you is not a freebie. Right. It's so that you can be involved in uh, the path to your Hashem. And I think actually the Sforno brings in, uh, you know, I felt like I was um, uh, just caught up on uh, Perikhov Zion because we learned it so much. Uh, but turns out Sforno brings it up as much as I do. <laughs> okay, he says uh, here, um, uh, that's how close. Uh, Sforno says, um, but, but ultimately, it's really for for us. Yes, for us. Yeah, yeah. You know, we have to frame it in a way where, like, we we can motivate ourselves. You know. Hold on. Yeah, place. yeah. I thought Toronto says it. Uh, he says, I thought he brought up when he was the Elliot Denola. Uh, he said the um, the Akash Alti, I think, or the way Lachas Lachasos. Yeah, here we go. Oh, it just isn't quite. Yeah, nafshi lashem. What does it mean, nafshi lashem? Misave lachazos benom hashem levakar beichalo. Right. All, all I really want to do is to contemplate God's uh, chachma and then be involved in actions that are in line with Yisrael Hashem. So that's really what we're 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 not forcing God's hand. We are recalling an argument of God, which is that the only reason why God forgives us is so that we can do tshuva, so that we can be on the path to fearing Him. But it really is for us, so we can fear Him. Isn't it also true that, like, it does seem true, like God created this universe for. I mean, in a certain sense, for us, for the people to recognize them. Right. And the only way for, in which people recognize them is if we break it. Yeah. Us. That's why uh, the Midrash, which I only know how to quote from the Rashba in the Parish of Agados, says that uh, one of the seven things that was created before the world. Uh, anyone know what the seven are? <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> I was kind of hoping you knew this one. Uh, no, not the rainbow. No, Dafka, not the rainbow. Wait, what are you saying? Oh, you're thinking of the things that create Bainam Shmashos. Oh, yeah. I'm talking about things that are created before the. Uh, that was your thing of also. No, you're all, you're all thinking of, of being Shemashos. This is before creation. The Imperial This is before creation. Yeah. Before creation. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, Torah is one of them. Yeah, yeah. Well, okay, six more. <laughs> uh, no. Is it Shabbos? Shabbos? Uh, I don't think so. Okay, if I can't find it, I'll have to just post it, share it later on. Um, I know one of them is the name of Mashiach. <laughs> uh, wait, here we go. Here we go. Yeah, this is in uh, in Nadarim. Lama says on the base. Shiva Nivru Kodam Shnivru Haolam. Torah. 
Tshuva, Gan Eden, Gehenom, Kisei HaKavod, Beis HaMikdash, and Shemosh HaMashiach. Yeah. Okay. You want to know why? Because he never creates something bad without the... Uh... Ah, it was called the cure. Yeah, the cure for yeah. Right. Never, yeah. So I, I believe the reason why he says tshuva was created before, um, uh, before the world, is because of exactly that. What you're saying is like man is going to sin, but like, so you know, uh, uh, this was like contemplated in the act of creation that like he he gave a path of tshuva. You know, yeah. So that's uh, yeah. So did we answer the, that last ten percent of your idea? Like I think so. Yeah, I, I think we know. So let's just put it all together. Yeah, yeah. I'll get Ayala first, and then we'll put it all together. Yeah, Ayala. Okay, so in we the first half, what we're so asking, we're yeah, for Hashem to save us, are we asking like to save us from our physical tar, or are we asking like I remember in other fucking we've had, like asking Hashem to help us along in the tshuva process. Yeah, so I, I'm i going to go with the Mepharshim here that, that the depths is the depths of Gullus. Okay, it seems like that's the, the standard interpretation of here. Okay, so let me let me walk it through from the top. Yeah? Well, I feel like we should say this before in Tibur. Like, oh, uh, that's the minhag. Isn't the minhag that people say this? Um, doing a search of tshuva. Doing a search they open the Aron and say this? Yeah. Uh, yeah, the only reason we don't say it is because we don't, we're not mafsik there. Uh, you know, uh, or 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 is it because we don't say till him outside of um, Brooks Amar and Pesukah Dezimra? I think that's why we don't do it. <laughs> <laughs> do they say it in New Hampshire? No. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it's fine. Okay. 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 No, no, but you're but you're right. That, that that that's actually a good call. That's a good call. Yeah. Okay. So let me walk it from the top. Okay. You get the 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 the, the shorter version here. Okay. So. So the, the subject of this is, uh, actually we'll say the subject at the end. Okay, let's just walk through the, the pieces. Okay, so the depths is really two things. It's the depths of your avonos um, and, uh, and your, but the prompt is the depths of Gullus, right? Okay, and you're recognizing in the first half that you're, you have so many avonos that you're so distant from God in terms of the distortions that you're not even worthy of being listened to. That's why he has to ask Hashem, please listen to my voice. Just listen to the sound of my supplication. Then you make an argument to God. If you were to not forgive sins, then mankind couldn't exist. And and what would happen is if you didn't have uh, forgiveness, we would just go off and just say, screw it, and just do a bunch of averos, and there wouldn't be Yeras Hashem. So the very fact that you have slicha, you gave us slicha so that we can rehabilitate ourselves and be on the path to fearing you. And that's part of your will, and we want to do your will. That's what we want to do your will for. Okay, fine. On the other hand... You promised Israel that you're going to get them out of Galus, and you promised it that it's going to happen no matter what, just as certain as the dawn. Okay, um, and you've done it many times before, so therefore Israel has good reason to hope for him. Okay, so what is the? How does this come about? How is God going to redeem us? Only if we do tshuva. Okay, because He's going to redeem you from your sins. That you have to initiate this through the doing of the tshuva and any soul in the gal and el of the tshuva. So the 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 purpose of this is to recognize your distance from Hashem, which is the cause of all the sorrows of Galos, and to realize that the only way that you can get out of it is by doing tshuva, um, and uh, and then he'll redeem Israel. Okay. Very good. Thank okay, you. good. We we, 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 uh, we got it in one, uh, one shot. Okay, maybe next time what we'll do is the one that Tamara requested, which is 139, or maybe we'll do one of the other ones that we say as part of the uh, the series or whatever. I, I've been eyeing uh, Pei Gimel about the enemies that want us to not exist. That yeah. one looks very interesting. Yeah, yeah. But uh, that might need some more work. Maybe I'll do the one that we did with the...